how then did your business start to grow where it was Jay Hoover? I mean, this is, you know, this right. is who I am. So, I mean, that was, I mean, the way that was set up, I mean, they basically were saying, hey, we're getting all this work and we're filling up your schedule. So it was almost like I was locked in with this, with this, I, it was almost like being an employee mm -hmm. without being an employee. Sounds like it. Um, and so it, it was very hard to pull away from that structure of, I mean, they're filling my calendar up like a month, month and a half out. Um, I think the biggest thing for me was just understanding how all the different processes work of, of, you know, walking to home. I mean, the biggest thing I learned was just meeting a new customer every day and a half, like every, almost every day. Like I, I probably did a few hundred kitchens in like a little over a year and a half. Um, and so it, so I got comfortable with the work aspect. Mm -hmm. I was incredibly uncomfortable with the grind and not feeling like I could pull away from there because it's very difficult to be able to get any other work. And there was a transition that did happen um, from that. Um, like I ended up meeting a, a guy who we had some uh, mutual connections and he was a real estate investor. And, and he said, Hey, I need work on all these houses and I don't want to just do crappy work, you know, which a lot of flippers are known for. They're just like dirty, get in, get out. Um, he's like, I, I want to be able to do a good job. And so he said, I have as much work for you as you want. So he, I ended up just cutting ties with the other people and that kind of helped me get my feet wet and really be able to start having the flexibility to do other work as well. Um, so, so, I mean, that was still his job. <clears throat> right. So when and how did you start getting your own personal clients? Right. So with him, I had flexibility in the sense of, um, like as I started getting inquiries to do different work mm -hmm. then I could just say, Hey, like, here's my availability. Like, and then using that as filler work. Yep. for getting other jobs. So it's really only been in the last year that I've really been really, you know, less than a year, really pulled away from even that. Okay. Um, I mean, they usually say it takes five years to really get your business up and running. And I'm hitting five years this, this summer. Uh -huh. um, so the, the biggest impact with that has been just building up, um, just like slowly building up a client base. So when I got a job here or a job there, as I was doing a lot of the work for the, um, the, you know, the real estate investor, that's kind of helped. And, and honestly, one of the biggest impacts has been actually Instagram. Um, I've found Instagram to be the most powerful tool in my belt as far as, you know, one side just learning in the community and the other side is developing trust with potential clients as well as with current clients. Um, how do so, you, how do you develop trust with your clients through Instagram? Being honest. Um, I, you know, I, I, so, I mean, you can put up the pretty pictures, which is great on your feed and I'll try to do that and curate some of those things. But a lot of them is, is just talking on the backside of it. Um, so, you know, like I, I try to be as honest as I can. Like if I mess something up, like, hey, here I, you know, I screwed this up. Like, there was a kitchen I did last fall. Um, it was just like a little coffee station. Uh, each cabinet had a finished end. Well, I flipped them. And I, it was at the end of the day. <laughs> I had a brain fart, and I screwed the finished panels together on the inside where they were supposed to come together instead of them being opposite. Um, and so, you know, how I was just kind of like, hey. But how does that connect with Instagram did you talk about it on your IG or something I did yeah I did in my stories and just like hey like I messed up but mm -hmm. here's how I'm going to fix it mm -hmm. and I'm staying positive about it because there's really not much you can do mm -hmm. but you know I'm going to make it right um you know just even little things just like little finished details like you know here's how some people might do it because it's cheap and easy yeah. because it saves the guy time you know if you run in if you find a problem there's 21 ways to mask something and I hate operating like that. Yeah. So I say, here's how it can be done. And maybe you've seen it done, but here's how I'm going to do it. And then I'll show them that. So I think you build trust that way. And I think the other way you build trust is, is just by the quality. You know, I try to put out the best quality product I can. 
And probably the, the biggest thing that I try to live by is always try to be a better version of you, meaning myself, on your next job than you were on the last. And I think if you use that, it creates such a big building block. Um, like I always have like a little self-reflection just in my mind when I get done with the job. Like, hey, what could I have done better? Whether either how do I produce a better product, um, maybe a better experience with a client, or maybe a better way in how I'm going to, you know, do that job or do that project. Yeah. How do you charge for your work? Um, so, so I, I have like a mix. So if you look at like my Instagram feed, I have a mix of woodworking and I have a mix of remodeling. And I feel like my sweet spot is when they're both mixed together. So if I'm doing a large project, I'll just do, uh, I won't do line item. I'll just do an estimate for it. Um, if I'm doing, you know, there might be some cases where, I mean, it's very rarely I, I, I do time and material just because it's not, unless I, you know, it's part of a bigger job when we get into, you know, a bunny rabbit trail for something, then I will. But most of the time I'll just do, I'll give an estimate for a job and that's you know, how I do it. Yeah. So on that estimate, <laughs> do you turn that over to them and say, here's the estimate or does it become a proposal where you, you know, it's, this is the fixed amount that it's going to be and they agree to it. How do you resolve that? Yes. So like, so if it's for a kitchen, I will, you know, we'll go over, Hey, what, you know, what I've been trying to do is saying, Hey, what are you looking to do? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and they'll tell me and I'll say, Hey, here's going to be a general ballpark of what you're looking for. And a lot of it's going to be dependent upon obviously your materials. Um, so when I propose an estimate, I end up, you know, you'll have like allowances obviously for different things. So if, if there's like a little bit of, you know, up in the air, we're not sure what we're putting in there. Well, I'll just do, you know, allowances for this allowances for that. And usually I'll do it a little on the higher end. Cause I, I would rather find out, you know, first of all, if I can find out their budget, that's is a, a big difference. Sure. Um, but if I can find out, hey, here's where you're not going to spend any more than this, I know from a consumer end, I like personally knowing we're not going to go above this. Mm -hmm. Obviously, unless you run into things that are unforeseen, and obviously you include that on so there. So what but do then you do one, then if it comes in below that? I well, do you, I already have my fixed price. The only thing okay. that's going to be a variable will be the allowances. So if you have allowances for a fixture and it's 300 bucks and it ends up the one they're picking is 240, well then I'll deduct that off of there. Okay. I mean, that's, that's kind of how, how I have it figured out. Like my, my labor is going to be the same mm -hmm. no matter what. And I just try to make the variables and materials that are going in because I feel like if you sacrifice on your labor, then you're going to be sacrificing on the quality. And that's kind of what I try to, explain to them right so how are you how are you getting new clients now like how how are people either finding out about you or how are you reaching out to them and getting new work um so a lot of it i mean a lot of it you have traditional word of mouth um a lot of this goes back to instagram so that i, I found it as a powerful tool especially in the last year where i paid huge amounts of attention to like hashtag and location. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter where I'm working at. Like, so I, so the, the current job I was working at where I did like a custom wood bent hood, uh, a really neat, um, solid wood Island top as part of a whole kitchen remodel. Whenever I'm posting, I always post to the area that I'm actually from. Cause that's where I want to be ideally working closest to, even though I was working in a town, you know, 50 minutes away. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, hashtags, 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 like they, it, they work so well. Like there's tons of times I'll get DMs. Hey, I live so, you know, somewhere, you know, whatever town it is. And do you, you know, do you service this area? And sometimes I do. And sometimes I don't, depending on how far it is. Hey, I really love that you build blank. We're redoing our kitchen. Is this something you could build for me? Hey, you know, I saw these, uh, building bookcases that you're doing. I saw, I, you know, I, I get it all at the, not all the time, but enough that it's, it's providing leads for me. Can you build me one? I live in the same area. Um, and, and then not only that, like I, like when I walk, it, it's so interesting because when I walk into a, a house, 
from just a light, what I call a light referral. It might be from referred from a, a referral from a referral, maybe like a friend of a friend. There's always that little trepidation. People don't know you. Right. And there's kind of like the icebreaker. And I feel like whenever you do that whole entire project, you finally earn your trust at the end. And then they're happy and excited. Yeah. And it's like, man, you got to do all this work to get to that point to finally earn their trust. And I feel like with Instagram, people are like, oh, I love your stuff. I can't wait for you to come over here. And they're, I mean, they already know you. And that's I think that's awesome. the importance of like being like visibly seen on stories. They just kind of, they already feel like they know you. Yeah. And so when you walk in, like the trust is there, like they already trust you. Um, I mean, I get that so much time. Hey, I've seen your work. I trust you. Like, and it's been it's been huge. Now let, uh, let's break down this hashtag and location a little bit more. When you post an actual post on your Instagram feed, you can specify the location at the very top of that feed, right, or at the top of that picture, and that would Correct. be your geotag or your location, and and that's where you enter your where you live, not where Cor the job is. Is that correct? Correct. I'll I'll, and I re yeah, the reason why I'm doing that is because that's where ideally I want to get my work. Correct. Okay. It's closest to home. So there's that. And then under the picture, you have up to 30 hashtags or whatever. Do you also use hashtags that indicate location or are they more like woodworking, bookcases, and those kind of um, hashtags? Both. Okay, you so do both. in your hashtag yep. pack, you're also using location down there as well. So right, so for so I live in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So I'll and specifically in the town of Lutitz. So I'll use hashtag Lutitz, Pennsylvania because I've looked it up. So a lot of the people in the community that are on social media that are usually tagging that mm. as well. And then I'll also use Lancaster because that's like a little broader area. If I want to go further than that, then I would I would do that. But it, because people follow hashtags mm -hmm. because hashtags are different than geolocation. So if you just do geolocation, you know, you can make that anywhere. And so I'm attracting people who are searching via geolocation and I'm attracting people who follow hashtags in Lancaster. Mm -hmm. And so I also do whatever pertains to the project I'm working on. So if I'm doing kitchen remodeling, you know, I'm doing Ben Hood's kitchen. If I'm doing shaker style, I'll do like shaker style. And I'll usually already have them pre-done in my notes where I can just copy, paste, drop them in so I'm not wasting time. Yeah. Um, and so what happens is if, you, if you're trending really well on all those other little different things and people are liking them, it ends up pushing you higher also in visibility to, you know, hashtag, you know, wherever the location is. So it helps push you up. And makes you more visible. Do you have and any so think, ideas on how to trend better? <laughs> uh, you know what I mean. Good Just... Yeah, I mean good content. I mean that that's. Um, I know videos are videos are, are are king on Instagram. They just are. Um, like I had like I threw up one just me just assembling a vent hood, and. You know, that, that, that hit like 160,000 views and I had people asking me around the country, can I build a vent hood and ship it? Um, and then even some local people, um, just, I, I think people underestimate the value of what they're doing and, and caring about, you know, I, I talked to a lot of guys like, oh, well, no one really cares, cares about me doing this. I'm like, well, I just posted up a video about me. Use, it was just a, a pot filler. Well, there's a whole bunch of other, you know, um, feeds that pick that up. And I think it's combined. There are like a million and a half people that have, have looked at that. Well, that kind of helped push me up, you know, made me more visible possibly to people local. And I, I think what people are doing, it doesn't matter what your craft is or what part of whether you're new construction or, you know, remodeling. I think taking the time to show people what's what's happening, what people are doing. A lot of people, they're just they don't know. Like there's trends that are happening. I mean, typically, like if you see the trend in Home Depot, they're usually like six, seven years behind because I mean that's just kind of naturally how it is. And so there's neat designers who are doing things. There's neat um, guys who are who are remodeling and building. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, just doc document everything. Like, I'm a big proponent of document everything. A, it helps people who want to know how to do it. And B, it helps the consumer who's looking 
to find out, oh, I'm building this or I'm remodeling my house. I want that in my house. Mm -hmm. And then they go, oh, my word, you live an hour away. Can you come do my house? So now in the stories, when you do a story, do you also use a geotag and a hashtag and, you know, like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, for, I'll keep going back to the recent uh, kitchen model. This so it's like, basically it's a farmhouse style kitchen. And that's literally the hashtag I use. It has roughly doesn't have an asinine amount where it gets lost in the feed. But when you, but it has it's popular enough. Um, that it's trending. Um, so if you were to look up hashtag farmhouse style, you would see all the pictures obviously that are hashtag. But then it would have in the story icon as well anybody who's used that hashtag in there and there's hardly anybody using the hashtags in there so if you're competing against 250,000 posts underneath hashtag farmhouse style mm -hmm. and i go in and i do a story on farmhouse style or mm -hmm. a kitchen, farmhouse kitchen style and post that that gets dropped in the little you know rainbow looking stories on the hashtag and i think one time i clicked there there's only 14 stories mm -hmm. that's nothing for 250,000. I mean, there's, I mean, there's guys I know that post more than 14 stories in a day. Mm -hmm. And so you can get easy access to people potentially there. And, and like that'll double my viewership on my stories just by doing that alone. And so it's helpful. Absolutely. Hmm. That's cool. Do you have any other you tips any on Instagram before we move on? I, I think I, I mean, I could talk to him blue in the face. I, my, my biggest thing is I just encourage everybody to document, document, document. A, it builds trust. B, your clients love it. I mean, the clients, if clients aren't following me on Instagram, I tell them I'm on there. Usually they don't know about it or maybe they know a little bit about it. And all their friends end up following and watching along. It ends up being like a little community event where, you know, their friends will chime in. It's just neat because you're actually, it's like watching, it's like watching HGTV for your friends because you kind of get to watch the process. It's, so Jay, it's Jesse Hoover's reality TV show. Yeah, it's probably not a very good one, but. 